Welcome back on AdobeLive.com. I'm yeah. here joined by Eric Kirtley, uh, who, who came yesterday as well. This yeah. is actually day two of our graphic design stream here live from Paris. And uh, yeah, you have the second segment today after oh. Amanda. We, we designed some um, magazine mm -hmm. cover with Amanda. And um, with you yesterday, we created a poster for a movie. Yeah, that's right. Uh, maybe we can have a quick look at it yeah. again. Let, let just yeah, let's move maybe move over to you and mm -hmm. have a quick look at your poster again. Yes. Um, the one that we created yesterday. Yeah. Because today we're going to be working on an entirely new project with Eric. Ah, the holy mountain. Yes. And it looks it looks very good. <clears throat> I love I love the design. I love the colors. I love the yeah. vibrancy. I think it works. It works great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I did a little what do you guys think in the in the chat? Do you like that poster? Yeah, so <laughs> I worked a little bit on it uh, after the stream uh last night uh -huh. and added some more uh like shadows and stuff okay Photoshop and some more light yeah I'm, i noticed i'm noticing new elements in there yeah like new gradients yeah yeah so you actually left the stream and worked on it more yeah a little bit <laughs> in bed <laughs> that is passion that is passion <laughs> looks awesome right nico hello everyone hello and uh yes eric is swedish too Hello from Norway. Oh, Jan Eric, yes. Hi, Jan, Jan Eric. Hi, Jan Eric. She shares. <laughs> she shares your name. Powerful. Yes. Great job. Good. Yep. Love it. All right. So, okay. What are we going to be working on today? Today, uh, I'm going to be working on, on a rebrand mm -hmm. of a uh, beer uh, label. Okay. So I decided to rebrand a beer uh, label that's from my hometown. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, Actually, the brewery is just like a, a short walk from where I grew up. Okay. And uh, it's called Falcon Beer. And this uh, brewery, it's today it's bought, it was bought by a big, big uh, company. But it used to be just a small brewery and they had their own beer. And so I kind of grew up, you know, having classmates who his parents would work there and so on. So I thought it would be fun to uh, do a rebrand, but not just any kind of rebrand. So I've seen... Last year I saw a lot of these kind of retro rebrands. Okay, yeah, yeah. Where like Kodak went back to a more, yeah, a logo that looks more similar to their uh, original or earlier logos. And also uh, the co-op and um, like Budweiser have also gone back to mm -hmm. the design. Because I was looking- so it's back uh, to the roots. Back to the roots, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll show you the one, the, how the label kind of looked like. When I grew up, this is how I remember it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Falcon. Uh, and also the brewery was called back then, uh, not even pretty far back it was called, uh, it, it was, the name was in Swedish, so it was Falcon Bryggeri. Okay. Yeah. And then they, but the beer is called, has been called Falcon. So then they said, we need to access other markets. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But Let's call it Falcon. Falcon, yeah. <laughs> but I found this, and this is an old uh, beer glass mm -hmm. uh, for for that brand. And this was uh, this is a really old beer can with a old. When design. you say old, how old? Mm, that's a good question. I guess maybe this would be because that's a that's pretty old. It's this design of a beer can mm -hmm. since it's so thin and tall. But I don't know. I have to look that up. Okay. But uh, maybe. 60s 70s mm -hmm. these are from so what i want to do is i want to base my rebrand on this uh, on the old okay so yeah, like yeah back to the roots back to the roots okay. but i want to rework it a bit and i'm so when you do a rebrand um usually you 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 say i'm doing a rebrand because yes you know what's your because because it's fun okay <laughs> all right <laughs> Because in this, this case, I don't know if I could say, you know, they really need to do it. Mm -hmm. or I, I guess they have a good uh, brand today for uh, their target group. But I, I think it's a fun trend, this kind of nostalgic mm -hmm. uh, approach to rebrand. And uh, like, it's very, uh, a, lot of, a lot of times these old uh, brands were more simple mm -hmm. in their design. I think it's fun to play with. And also just, you know, retro. Nostalgia, nostalgia. And Terry White is in the house. Hey, Terry. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the stream. 
the falcon looks pissed. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I'm gonna try to make the falcon look a little happier. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Can I see the falcon again? Like, yes. what, how does the falcon look right uh, now? Like this. I think like, it almost looks more like an eagle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I looked I looked at some uh, images of falcons. Okay. I think they have smaller beaks and mm -hmm. that are a bit rounded. rounded. Yeah. yeah. Uh, show me show me again the the original the the one yeah right mm. yeah so it, it's more rounded yeah yeah like the falcon nose and the more recent logo has mm -hmm. been more naturalistic mm -hmm. uh, like this it looks like let's google a falcon and stick him there yeah yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> um so what i did because i'll i'll retrace i've done a little preparations but i'll, I'll just show you how I, what i how i started with mm -hmm. So I started by just taking this uh, image and cropping out the old logo. And straightening it out a bit. Something like that. Transform. Can I show you a trick? Yes. Okay, get away, away from that. Where's the ruler tool? Do you see the... Mm. Maybe it's in here. No. Oh, help. Yes. <laughs> um. Tool. That one? No, there's a tool in here somewhere. Wait. Ugh. Is it... Mm. There. There, yeah, all right. Okay. So all you need to do yeah. is click, drag, and straighten layer. Ah, time saver. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little closer crop here. Hey, Philip. Hi, Chase. Hi, Angelo. Hi, Drew. Hi, F Lisa. Everybody's back, and we have some new newcomers to the stream as well. By the way. Let me just move up to my screen very quickly uh -huh. uh, because what I want to show you guys and what I want everybody to do in the chat is to test something out for me because I really need to see how that works. Let me move over here. Okay, now we have this mirror effect that we're seeing a lot of us here. Like, oh no, it's, it's not actually not synchronized. See? Oh, oh no. no. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there is a button here on Adobe Live dot com okay down here the share button all right and i want everybody now to share on their twitter on their facebook on their google plus or to share the link simply just test out one of those sharing functions that we have prepared for you on adobelive.com all right and since i'm here on adobelive.com that's where you also see the whole schedule like for the rest of today and then what's happening tomorrow again when we start over with uh, um, uh, amanda and then eric again for for his last day tina and uh, last but not least victoria evaldi for the night shift all right so that's where you find all the all the schedules and access all of the replays as well. Like these are all the replays from uh, from from yesterday, and you can find them right here on AdobeLive.com. So let's move back to you, Eric. Yeah. Uh, oh, this was getting getting crazy. Yeah. Ooh. Whoa. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, ah. uh, like that movie, uh, Inception. Yeah. Inception. Yeah. <laughs> dimension into <Ooh>. dimension. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Kelsey. Thank you, Yagoda. Daniel. Right. Daniel. <laughs> yes, Inception. That's right, Terry. <laughs> okay, so I want to uh, I want to create a reference image here, or maybe I should do just black and white, the black and white function. That way I can make white. Mm -hmm. red. Yes. Yeah. Get rid of all the colors. Yes. And just use the brush, paint over this. Yeah, you know this hasn't been in Photoshop. Uh, forever. I mean, in the past, the only way to go to black and white was to go grayscale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's really uh, that's uh, that's really the best yeah. way to, um, to to transform an image into a black and white image. Yep. Yeah. So I don't need to save this because I already have this saved. But what I did once I had this ready was that I uh, started a Illustrator document. Oh no! You've lost your linked file. Maybe I can find it. Oh, just take the one you just did. Yeah, true. 
but I think I sh Here, there it is. So, yeah. So here's the Photoshop image of the old logo. And on top of this, I just traced it with uh, a, a stroke. And uh, this is what it looked like, the first version. And so I started simplifying it and mm -hmm. rounding off the beak. Yes. And also I used, made some guides just to kind of structure it a bit. Crazy guides. Crazy guides, <laughs> but there is some kind of system here okay. somewhere. Uh, but trying to make it more, even though it's, it's not a symmetrical logo, but make it feel more symmetrical. And then I got to this version, uh, which I thought, think, is more in the direction I wanted to go. And I started experimenting with some thinner lines and shorter beak, mm -hmm. uh, and then also simplifying it even more, removing this yeah. zigzag. And I'm not sure which one I prefer. Well, the zigzag gives this sense that maybe there is another color feathering yeah. on the on the neck. True. It's like a mm. scarf. Yeah. Uh, this might be. This might. This looks a little bit like a ghost in Pac-Man. Mm-hmm. I think. So. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this one. Okay. Yeah. So okay, next step is to make a label out of this for a beer bottle. And I have no idea what this is gonna look like, so we'll just see what happens. Yeah. People are saying very quick design, impressive. You did that very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to focus more on mm -hmm. like the label design, yeah. so I had prepared the um, the logo, uh, and also I mean it's not that far from uh, it's from the original. It's just more mm -hmm. it's a little thinner. More symmetrical, and the beak looks. Mm -hmm. more, and it, yeah. Why? Why did you choose to make it a zigzag and not like have the feathers like with the rounded thing? Oh, that's true. Yeah, I wanted to simplify it mm -hmm. even more. Um, but of course, I mean maybe I don't know. Maybe stops. This looks like feathers, right? This yeah. Is a feather shape. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what. We could do so. I guess Krista, Krista Kaiser is asking, how long did that take you to make? Like how, this little mm. process here that you've. Uh, maybe I guess between one and two hours. One and two hours. Oh well, while Amanda was streaming. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> A few days ago. <laughs> By the way, welcome to the stream, Krista. <clears throat> Yeah, thicker lines stand out more. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. I, mm -hmm. That's why I, I was thinking first that I would do the, the label in InDesign. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I can keep uh, the like stroke uh, width and stuff like that, mm -hmm. if I can change that as easily. So I think I'm just going to stick to Illustrator. Yeah, for now. I think Illustrator is a good choice for making a label. Uh, label, yeah. Uh, so I guess... Wait a minute, let's see here. Look at this again. So I went to round these off, but they're still kind of pointy. Mm -hmm. um, maybe by outlining... Huh? Maybe I could... You know what you could do? You could outline the line mm -hmm. and just work on the inner ones. Ah. Uh, okay, so you like, mean like, yeah, like expand? Expand it. Okay. Yeah. And then just work on the inner points and make those round. And move them up. Like this, yes, maybe? like that. Yeah. Maybe. maybe, maybe. Let's see. I'll, I'll mark. I'm not one. I don't want to be the art director today, so I'm just gonna <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be kidding me. Hmm. Maybe. May oh, I think I know what I could do. I could. Okay, so. I do like this, and then I grab this handle mm -hmm. and take it down to the same. And then, okay, now I got these flat. Yeah, but tops. this is very easily. This is changeable. Hmm, it is set on sharp corners. But there's a limit, right? Okay, okay. So I I, I've never used this. Try one. Okay, maybe no. uh, a higher number. Higher. Then? 
never used it either, so... <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna stay. Keep stay with the very simplified uh, zigzag line for now. Mm. Can always go back. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think this line uh, stroke thickness is probably better. Now I've got like these decimals on my mm -hmm. because I've been resizing it, but I, I want a uh, exact number yes. there. Not to so you're nerding out on numbers. Yeah. Okay. Don't want I do that all the time as well. <laughs> yeah. Like 1.2 millimeters. What's that? No, no, no. One millimeter <laughs> or two millimeters, but yeah. not 1.35. No, it, it gets, it can get a little um, messy. That's too thin. That's too thick. Maybe this was what I had probably. Okay. Nine. Nine will be a good. Nine points. Take that. Okay, copying that, and now the label. Okay, well, well, size, I don't know. Maybe, uh, ten, ten centimeters. Whoops. Jesus, the centimeters. Yeah, Mat Mattia Carletti is saying it bothers me that everything is symmetrical, but not the zigzagging uh, the, at the lower mm. edges. It's like I noticed that too. Yeah. Like, see what I mean? Like these, like these things here. These. Yeah. This is the only zigzag that's different. Mm. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. Um, this is because this line is uh, diagonal. Uh, so. I wanted the the zig mm -hmm. <laughs> to to end on this line, right? You wanted the zig to zag correctly. Uh, yes, I wanted. Right? <laughs> I mean, I I guess it could be like that might be correct, but then we have this very small. I don't know. Hmm. We'll leave yeah, it, yeah, yeah. we'll leave it like this for okay. now. Uh, you can always go back and and uh, re try some new things. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna you know guess here how big a label could be maybe 10 centimeters times uh, oh not one times uh, eight why is it okay and we'll have a few artboards because I want to make a lot of different versions Okay. Let's discuss more on the zigzag. No, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we got the falcon. And uh, yeah, that's right. Now, so this is too big. I'm gonna resize it, but I'm gonna have to turn off the scaling of strokes. No, turn it on. I mean. Name this logo. Make a new layer. Typography. We'll have a look later, Philip. We're just getting started with Eric here. Yep. He, he needs to to warm up and get this label going. Yep. Got to get everything in. So I just wrote down what the Swedish text that's on the original label. So we're gonna need a, well, a part of the logo is the name, right? So, mm -hmm. Falcon Beer. And then we're gonna need this tagline that says, made from fresh uh, water and the best ingredients. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this says that it was the brewery was founded and what who, the name of the founder was founded in 1896 in Falkenberg, which is my hometown oh, in Falkenberg. Yes, this is why it's called Falcon. This is why it's called Falcon. The um, mountain of the Falcon. Yes. And this is that this is, this is it's brewed and uh, tapped by the Falcon Brewery, which was the old name for the brewery. 
and then the alcohol content which is 2.8 that's super light beer that's a very light beer but very that's light. Uh, kind of common in Sweden yes the, light, there's, light. there's been a lot of that okay yep. uh, so where do it's I go? it's a trick to make you drink more falcon beer probably <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna move these to the side, and I think I'll decide on a. Uh, I'm gonna try out some different typefaces for mm -hmm. the logo. So I'm gonna start up. I need some guides here just to center everything and make it look good. And I got. Let's see. I guess if you have smart guides on, maybe it they'll snap to the middle. Let's see. Nope, but I actually got a plug-in, so let's quickly make some guts. Anna, you're saying that Twitter is not showing your tweets with the hashtag Adobe Live? One thing could be that uh, you're only seeing some of the tweets, so let me let me see. Yes, you have to you have to select latest tweets, and then you see everything. That's what we do to not miss a piece of art that you guys submit to us with the Adobe Live hashtag. I'm gonna change the colors of the guides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we don't have you this. See? You know, this problem. is so easy in Illustrator. Is this yeah. something that we're trying to figure out in in um, in InDesign? I but figured out. In InDesign, it's the color of the layer. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. if you figured out something else? Yeah. All right, can we show us? Yeah, I'll show you. Yes, Everybody, exactly. drum roll. We're gonna see how to color the guides in InDesign because I couldn't remember for, to save my life. Mm. Yeah, pro mm. tip right here. Somebody asked what plugin I was using, and that's a Guide Guide. For uh, it's available for both Photoshop and uh, Ill Illustrator. Ah, uh, so it's a plugin. Uh, yes, this uh, Guide Guide. It, it's kind of like uh, make uh, guides in in the same. It's the same ah, function. Ah, okay. And but this, but this is not what you use to. This is what you use to color the guides. No. Okay. Okay. No. okay. Just to make the All mid, right, okay. midpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you go to uh, layout, ruler guides, and here you change the color. So um. say I choose orange, and then it'll be orange. Mind blown. <laughs> it's the small things, people. It's the small things. Yep. Okie dokie. So they're testing other security systems right now, and uh, there's a there's a fat chance that we're gonna be locked in this oh, no. studio and yeah, never get out. So we just we just stream. Until the door reopens, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no, I'm stuck. Uh, okay, so set this to 40 points. And I wanted it to be, I think this is called. When you have the same... The letting? Yeah, the, when you have the letting set to the same as the... Um, the font size? But yeah, I think as you call it solid set or something like that. I read this recently. Oh. But this is too not tight enough, so we'll do Okay, so I'm just gonna run through some fonts and see what sticks. So we could look at like the original label mm -hmm. and it's a slab serif. So maybe that's what I'm gonna go for here too, mm -hmm. but maybe something. Have you ever tried Typekit? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and I have synced. Yes. Some fonts <laughs> in, in preparation for this, actually. I. Will, but we can we can look at the website. Oh well, we, no, we can go directly from the application. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you go into the font menu. Yeah. Add fonts from Typekit, and then it opens the page. Right. But then it's connected already. It, it knows. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Um, and yeah, and then you can choose the classification and you said slap serif. Is there some? Yeah, there is slap yes. serif right there. Boom. All right. Let's see, I'll sign in here and we can see. Oh, you got signed out? 
Yeah, it signs me out sometimes. And then we can see which one I've which ones I've already synced. Uh, slab serif. You can actually write the name of the beer yeah. up here. Falcon beer. Falcon beer. There we go. So we can see immediately how how it would look. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah, it signs me out. I don't know why, but I think uh, this one among us, a few others I like, synced mm -hmm. earlier. So we'll see. I'm just gonna. I don't have that many fonts installed on this computer yet. So oh, let's see. Pick this and choose one here. Let's see. Jan Labo, we, you just have to put the cursor in the in the um, the font menu and just use the up and down arrows. We have a key. Hmm. That was interesting. But now, we just gotta keep going. Where are the slabs? Whoa, nope. Huh, this one this was one I synced from Typekit. Um that's a little bit more expressive mm -hmm. than the original, but um I've seen this I'd seen this before and I really really like it, so I'm gonna keep it for now. And just What's its name? This is called uh, Van Lenin. Van Lenin. Yeah. And then it's from a... Uh, Van, Van Halen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Van Halen. Uh, I think it's from Hamilton wood type. Ooh. I think they make real wood types too. Yes. Let me move this up. Uh, I think if I... Let's see. I can paste this on all artboards. Yeah. And just keep going here in the next one, so I can compare them. Oh, here's a slab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I'll have to get back to where I was. So Ryan, uh, yeah, that's, you know, uh, license the font. Um, so basically the way it works is that um, in your Creative Cloud subscription, you have access to thousands of fonts in Typekit. And uh, that is included in Creative Cloud. You can use them. You can uh, use them in your um, designs for print, for uh, for your websites, for, um, for whatever you are doing. But as soon as you share the font, you can't share the font. For example, if you package an InDesign file with uh, fonts from Typekit, they won't show up in the in the fonts folder um, of the of the shared of the um, packaged file, because um, you know we assume that people who are going to be opening the um, the InDesign CC file will have access to Creative Cloud as well. So basically, fonts activate automatically on their computer, um, therefore launching their license to, to the font. If um, uh, your client um, wants the font, you know, fonts can always be licensed um, uh, as, as a single font. And now there's even a way to, um, in Adobe Typekit, to license fonts um, in the Adobe Typekit marketplace. So that's super interesting if you want to buy the font and actually um, uh, own it and download it and, um, you know, and have, make it yours. But the cool thing with Typekit is that uh, as a Creative Cloud member, you can use the fonts, you can put them in your PDFs and share those PDFs. You can, um, uh, yeah, you can do anything you want with these fonts. They're uh, yours to use. So somebody was asking how to paste on all art, copy and paste mm -hmm. all artboards. And that's uh, here, paste on all artboards. So that's shift option, command B. If oh, right. Yeah. 
So basically, you just make it once and boom. Yep. It pastes on all our boards. Yep. That's that's another cool trip. T uh, trip, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool tip, which I never thought about actually. No, I just I've seen it, uh, yeah. but I never actually put my thoughts into it. I just discovered it by accident and not wanting to paste mm -hmm. on all our boards, and that was kind of annoying. But when you need it, it's uh, it's a very uh, handy tool. Let's see. Well, it's at the end here. What's this? Nope. And there. So contest. Yes. Um, so Nightbot just reminding us that uh, you can uh, you can you can win a Creative Cloud a yearly Creative Cloud a Creative Cloud subscription for a year. Uh, all you have to do is share your artwork on Twitter, on Instagram, um, adding the hashtag uh, Adobe Live, and. Uh, we will be we will be giving out some stuff during the stream today, but on Friday, um, ten pieces of art that have been submitted this week will be chosen, and these um, these artworks will win a one year Creative Cloud subscription. So, get your Creative Cloud Creative juices flowing and and uh, submit your artwork. So Ryan, yeah, I think if it's a, you know, if it's a one one time logo, you can provide them with a PDF. You can provide them with, uh, um, uh, you know, images that are rasterized, which don't need the font. Um, so th they can do wh whatever they want with it, as long as they don't need the font installed on their computer. Um, if it's really a problem and they want to uh, to access, uh, I don't know, the the vectors, uh, which I, you know, God forbids that clients touch your vectors right do you agree on that uh, do you yeah. want clients the, the, to, to no, touch your vectors please don't yeah <laughs> we don't want clients touching our vectors uh, <laughs> um, uh, yes you know you could you could uh, outline the font but um, be careful with outlining fonts because it makes um, uh, your illustrator document overly complex um, I've had people show me like like being all angry on Twitter because uh, for, uh, illustrator crashed on them. And then I asked to see the the file, yeah. and it was a file with like an like a huge artboard with very little text, but very small text all over, and they outlined it. Mm. So basically, wow. that means a gazillion Bezier information in there, and of course, Illustrator will crash. You know, like <laughs> duh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I added another one. I this one. I like this one a lot. This is also from the Hamilton. Okay, hashtag hands off my vector. Yep. <laughs> yes, Gary, that's right. Uh, let's see. Okay, Anna, let's see what's happening. Well, you, Eric, you go ahead. Okay. I'm gonna be checking what Anna's talking about. Anna, do you think maybe your Twitter account is private? Like you don't share your posts? We've seen that happen once.
Are we back on my screen? Yep. Okay, so I've started to narrow it down here. Good night, Simon. Wherever you are, must be night. <laughs> Anna, why don't you share your Twitter handle here on um, in the chat? So we'll go directly to the source. Whoa. Okay, so I better just start saving here, I think. <laughs> ah, okay. I guess I can um, share my thoughts here and so I really like this this one here mm -hmm. just how it looks can um, oh we can do a little little um, how do you say can we do a little like asking if they prefer one two or three um, like a little poll yeah, you. ah you can yeah. yes All right, so on adobelife.com, in the interface, you will see a pop-up come up and you will be able to cast your vote of your favorite one. Okay. One, two, or three. No, no, not in the chat, not in the chat. That's I don't want to be counting numbers in the chat. <laughs> That's a good idea, but no thanks. So there will be a pop-up in on adobelife.com. That's where everybody should actually be watching this stream. And... It's coming soon. No, no, not not in the chat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, is it gonna take some time to come here? Oh no, here we go! All right, we can vote now. Cool. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, or all of them. All right, so cast your vote. Okay. Okay. So far, one is fifty-five percent. Hmm. Well, I've. I've I'm gonna go with the one that wins. How many? So. Yeah. <laughs> Alejandro says, none, start over. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna happen. Can you broadcast the results as well? Okay. Okay. More than 50%. 
like okay. 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 That's a that's a good mm -hmm. that's an interesting point, Michael. This is this is for us. To somebody says. Wait, wait. I don't watch it on Adobe Live because of the resolution settings, which yeah. I didn't find, and the volume, which you can only mute. Huh? Good feedback. Thank you, Yako. All right, All so right. number one it is. Okay. We'll with 29 with votes cast. So the reason I was a little like skeptical about using number one is because it's uh, the mo it feels the most detailed. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of thin, but I guess that that will be the challenge then. Uh, you shouldn't always go with the easiest choice. Mm. Uh, where I think this the middle choice, the sans serif here, would be the easy choice because it's so clean and geometric. And this one is actually quite close to the original um, in some respects. Um, so I think maybe that will. It, it's nice to go in a little different direction for this. So I, I think I'll keep these just to remember which ones I chose between. Okay, so before I start putting in the copy, the rest of the text, I'm gonna find a nice balance between the thickness of the lines and the typeface. So I guess first I'll have to kind of kern these in a way that feels good and I Let's see. Anita says the beer is not strong, so number one works just fine. <laughs> <laughs> the beer was really easy to kern. This one. What does uh, optical kern um, kerning do to uh, to this text? We'll try it out. It's in paragraph. No, mm. it's in character. Character. Cool. And Ooh, no, I've no. I've already ah, okay, put okay. on some uh, tracking on that. Okay. Um. So let's try to remove the tracking and see what the optical does. This is this. Oh, is this. It. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's it's kind of in the direction I went, mm -hmm. but I I think I preferred where I was going. I was doing it myself. Mm. Maybe the F is a little bit too close. Keep kerning. This will do for now, and then if I get as far as actually having a somewhat finished label, I can do some more detail, um, detail work. So I'm gonna, I don't know, maybe uh, the stroke weight on the logo is a little too thin compared to the typeface. Uh, I don't think I want, or maybe it could be as thick as the stems on the on, like on the L here. Um, give it a try. Now we have this weird 2.7, points. So I guess points is I, I guess it's based on typographic points. Yes. Yeah. But they, we can easily represent them by the, by one pixel as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Just because if I change, uh, like the rulers, for example. Yeah. Let's see. But if I would just write in a pixel here, uh, a millimeter, so maybe mm -hmm. two millimeters. It changes back to points, but maybe that's in the settings actually. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. We'll go with points. Mm -hmm. I I don't mind using points. I guess if you want to be really really. You know exact for some mm -hmm. reason maybe uh you can't maybe it's uh, like it would be a and screen, what reason would that be like screen printing i guess okay you can't have yes. two thin uh, lines. you can't have two thin lines yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, there's actually when you when you print them out when you create the pdfs there's actually um you can set a warning if lines get too thin okay yeah, yeah. So that so that you're actually alerted that um yep that there's gonna be a problem That's thin good. lines are never good no Ciao Alberto, no, uh, Riccardo, scusa. <laughs> okay, and now I just realized I don't like this on the beak here. And earlier I tried to just chop it off. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want it round and I don't want it like 
that. So yeah. I think I'll just have to... Uh, I'm going to save a version here on the side so I keep one that's not expanded. Uh, but now I'm going to expand it and make this beak uh, sharp, but not mm -hmm. not this. Mm. But now it's kind of like a spear. So, so Kelly, the difference between GPU preview and preview in Illustrator are the colors don't change. That has nothing to do with that. It's just how fast the illustration can be calculated. So basically, uh, with the GPU preview, you have the scrubby zoom. So if you click with your with your lens, you can zoom in, zoom out. Do you, do you still have that activated? Yeah, that thing. Is no? this? No. That's that's GPU preview, right? Okay. So, so if you if you if you if you go on the normal preview, is that this one? Yeah. You yeah, see, the, okay. you know, it's the old way, okay? So basically the GPU preview allows you to quickly zoom into places. And uh, one thing that's phenomenal is that, uh, and I think that we introduced that maybe two years ago, um, there was a limit to how much you could zoom in to an Illustrator document that was 6,400%, mm -hmm. which is already a lot, right? Yeah, that's but a But you lot. know how much you can zoom in now? No. 64,000%. Wow. Yeah, 64,000%. Maybe, yeah, maybe I didn't need that one at all. So Alejandro says that to de define define a logo and its typography without taking into consideration um, the new the new design for the um, for the label is an error. I didn't follow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like. Alejandro is saying that maybe mm -hmm. uh, in in his way of thinking, it, he would prefer to see all of the elements mm -hmm. already and like then define the logo around that. I don't know. I disagree with that. Yeah, um, I think yeah. I think I think everything can follow a path. Um, you know, like like we're doing just right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm. I guess everybody has different ways of working, and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes if you have a very complicated project, it's good to have a, a plan you know mm -hmm. a, a checklist yeah. and do everything in a specific way kind of set up from the beginning but mm. sometimes i can feel like um it gets it can get too planned mm. and it makes me less creative mm. so i yeah. like being all over the place and then in the end mm -hmm. you can structure put yep. structure to everything <laughs> okay so we got the logo we got a typeface and i'm feeling like this could be a bit bigger, mm -hmm. uh, and also tighter. I'm gonna go with this as a base. So I'll copy this and cut it out and paste it on all. So okay, time to put in the type, and I'm not gonna. I'm gonna wait with colors mm -hmm. for now. I was always taught if it doesn't work in black and white, it won't work in color. Probably true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I yeah, and I think that color is just it's a it's a it's like it has to it has mm. to complement the shapes. Mm -hmm. So it's good to set the shapes first. Yeah. Form. And Alter Egos Web TV, we're using Wirecast to do the chroma key. Okay, so I got my guides here, and maybe I need some help. I need some help, just a grid or something. So maybe I could use this plugin, or I could just use the grid tool. No, I'll use the plugin. And I'll set a margin. Maybe that margin will be about half a centimeter. See if this works actually. Yep, I did. And I'm gonna remove those and do redo it because I don't want some columns and rows mm -hmm. to get a grid, so maybe so it's ten it's uh ten centimeter size, so I guess it would be logical to yeah, maybe split it into actually let's just remove these and set the width for columns to be and rows to be five millimeters 
And now I got something to kind of start with. So this is guide guide. Guide guide. And you could do this yourself too, mm -hmm. but this kind of automates. automates yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so. Automating guides is always cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess I could set this the 2.8 in the same typeface and of course smaller then. But there's only one weight uh, to this typeface, this font. So it looks very thin compared to the to the logo. So I want to have something that complements it. Maybe it could be this Neuzeit Grotesque. Hmm. Mm. No, it's not speaking the same language. No. Um, but I think a sans, a sans serif will be a good complement. Mm, try this one. Bolder. Yeah, it, it almost looked like they ignored the percentage sign, like not this font because it has the same kind of weight, mm. but the font you had before, it looked like, okay, we did the numbers, but percentage, the, you yeah. know. Yeah. This is okay. I, I'll, I'll go with this. Maybe, I, I haven't tried this, but uh, there's paragraph styles here mm -hmm. now. Yes. And character, styles. and character styles. Maybe character styles would be more appropriate here. So maybe I'll just name this Me medium. Twenty. For now, just set some settings tracking a little too much. Twenty. Okay, we got the percentage up. Next one. Oh, make the comma a period in 2.8. Is that diff? I guess I don't know. I think it's different in different languages. Yeah, that's From an interesting thing. Is it a comma or is it a a point? Hmm. I think in Swedish it's more common with a comma. Okay. But uh, probably in English it would be a point. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm googling it for you. Thank you. Okay, so it's only Great Britain and United States that use a period to indicate a decimal place. Everybody else uses a comma. Okay. So I guess we can we can guesstimate that whoever said that is from the UK or the United States. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna make a new character style. I'm gonna put this character style on it and then make a new one based on that. Small. Make it ten points. Oh, well, count zero is is drinking a French beer and it's a comma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, we should put back the comma. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah, it's a it's Swedish it's beer, right? So. so. <laughs> okay. And there you go, Anita. You're in the UK and you put a point. <laughs> So, hmm, maybe this should be caps. Set that in the style. And I want it even smaller. Now this is, I don't have one with me, but I always think it's nice when we're working with print stuff to actually have like, uh, there are these uh, brochures or like mm -hmm. books where mm -hmm. you can see type sizes. Ah, okay. It makes it really, because it's hard, you know, like how like big. To, to estimate? Yeah, yeah. How big is seven points? Yeah. Will, it, will that be, and then it depends on the font too, mm -hmm. of course, if you can read it. Yeah, well enough. Yeah, I used to print out my own spec, spec books. I don't do it anymore because now I just design it, mm -hmm. and then I, I do a first print out very quickly and see exactly you know what's happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You, that's a good idea too. Hmm, I actually thought this. Hmm, I don't like the font the way it looks now. Maybe it's the caps. Choices, choices. Hmm. 
All right, so I think we're gonna do our first. I'm gonna for first giveaway. We're gonna give away a print uh, of an artwork that will be produced this week during our live stream here on adobelive.com. We haven't decided which print yet, but it'll be a very nice print on very good stock paper. And um, we're gonna be giving it out. I'm just gonna send Nightbot the correct answer. Is this correct? Don't say anything. Yes? Okay. Boom, Nightbot has the answer. <laughs> and what I want to know in the chat is, um, okay, so Eric was grew in that town and that's where the beer is from. I want to, I want the name of the beer. The, the, the name of the town where the beer is brewed. Yeah, the name of the town that Eric grew up in. Were you born there? Um, yes, or well, there's not a, uh, hospital there, but yeah, nearby. Uh, nearby. <laughs> so the way this works for those of you who are new and uh, on the stream, um, uh, we have an automated system called Nightbot, and uh, Nightbot will be looking at all the answers and um, you know pick a lucky winner out of all of the people who actually gave the correct answer, and. Uh, Something to bear in mind is that if you subscribe to the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, which you can do right here in on adobelife.com at the bottom left of the screen, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. You have five times more chances to, to win in these giveaways. Uh, yeah, that's actually quintupling your chances. <laughs> quintupling the chances. All right, I see a lot of good answers there. And very soon we're gonna have Nightbot pick a lucky winner out of all of you who are participating. And boom, we have a winner. And the winner is... DBDA Australia. Ah, DBDA Australia. DBDA Aust Australia. No, there's no, there's no kangaroos in Austria, I know. So <laughs> DBDA Austria <laughs> has won the, the giveaway very well. When did DBDA Austria join the channel? Oh, maybe not. Today, all right. So that's your lucky day, DBDA Austria. <laughs> Have you seen these stickers? No kangaroos in Austria? No, yeah. I haven't seen those. <laughs> All right, so DBDA, what you need to do is um, share your Twitter handle here in the chat or any other way, uh, means of, you know, that we can use to communicate with you. That can be, um, I don't know, your Skype name, your, um, your Facebook page. But if you have a Twitter handle, that's the easiest for us. Congratulations. Instagram account. Right, we, Instagram is no good for us, right? It's, no. Instagram is good. Ah, you have to be following one another. So, so what's good. been happening here in the last five minutes that I've been <laughs> babbling around <laughs> about? Um, I've been deciding mostly this, the size, mm -hmm. type sizes and uh, just putting everything in and making it look like okay you mm -hmm. know and now uh, some people in the chat were also asking are you going to go back to the <coughs> to the oval kind of mm -hmm. <coughs> shape i'm gonna try that mm -hmm. among uh others well i can try that right now actually because mm -hmm. i'm thinking uh, a good way to go from here could be to kind of just one print um, mm -hmm. yes uh, <coughs> I'm gonna put this in. Have that as a reference. Whoops, that didn't work. Turns an apple door. I 
aggressive with caps, maybe. We'll see. Maybe so uh, aggressive with the caps. <laughs> mm. Yeah. We'll see what happens. So okay. Let's try an oval. Or maybe like a rounded corner. Rounded corner. Yeah. Somewhere in between. I don't like this shape. Uh, it's a little mm -hmm. it's this is kind of like maybe a corners. coaster, you know, like yeah. square. This is a coaster, yes. Ah, this, oh, this is a coaster? This is a coaster. Okay. So, of course, uh, maybe the label... Let's look at the references. This is very much an ellipse. Or mm -hmm. a label. Label. Remove the typography for now. Try that there, and then use the rounder rectangle tool. Oh, so my... Yes, I'm drinking Falcon beer. <laughs> <laughs> Righty. Maybe I could just... Oh, I'll do it this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. That's a radius of... Could actually work. Can I change the radius? Here. I will even number four. We'll see about reintegrating the sunburst. People like the sunburst. Yeah, the but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of... Um... Okay, I'm gonna put some color. Uh, I'm gonna use. Oh, here we could see that it's actually not black. The mm. probably maybe you used um, rich black. Mm, probably maybe it's C C Y K black. No, I don't know why it's. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's not pure black. No, definitely. No, it is. Now it is. Now it's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna use a red <clears throat> just as the. Oh, I need to put this in a another layer so I don't touch that. Reference. How does it taste? No. It's called Guide Guide, the Guide plugin, right? Guide yeah, Guide. Guide Guide. Guide Guide. Very handy. Yeah, just so you remember, Guide Guide, like twice. No. <laughs> Color, color. So, I mean, maybe I could use a, a, a spot color, I guess. Yeah, like blue and yellow, like Anita says. Yeah. No, no just kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Anita says, what about the Swedish flag, you know? Uh, I don't know. I think that's actually kind of what they have now. It's uh, blue and gold. I think they still have these colors. Mm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a look at the Pantone swatches. <sighs> color sync. Let me do my color sync pitch here now. Okay. Because people are asking, why RGB? And I, I let me tell you why RGB. I should actually write a blog post or some a medium or something about that because, you know, people keep on asking, what about, wh why RGB? Why, why, why? <laughs> let me see. Uh, three... Yes. All right. Just moving over to my screen for a second. Here I am in uh, the color sync utility on the Mac. And basically, let me show you this. I'm going to take a, um, uh, an, a generic, generic RGB profile. All right. This is a generic RGB profile. All right. These are all the colors that exist in the RGB color spectrum. Okay. Pretty cool, no? Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep that for comparison. Hold for comparison, and I'm gonna add a CMYK profile to that. Boom. Okay, now you see the CMYK profile inside of the RGB profile. All right, and you can see how much color information you've actually lost when you go from 
RGB to CMYK. You're actually reducing your color spectrum tremendously, all right? All of these colors that are grayed out are lost forever because you can't go back from CMYK. If you go back from CMYK to RGB, all of these extra colors that you had previously, you, they will not be there anymore, all right? So work in RGB as long as you can because that's where you get the really vibrant, the really true colors. And then when you go to print, all you need to do really is in Illustrator or InDesign, just preview what the colors would look like in CMYK. And um, believe me when I say that the best person to convert your colors is not you. <laughs> it's your printer, right? Because your printer knows how their machines work, what printer they're going to be using. Is it going to be offset? Is it going to be digital printing? Is it going to be whatever? Uh, but let your printer do this work. De depending on your PDF. I only send PDFs with RGB images, RGB colors, everything um, to, to my printer. It makes it so much so much easier for me to work with with color. And uh, and all the the um, uh, the previews you can do in the applications if you need to, all right? So many people say, yeah, but if I do it in RGB, the, the client will say, oh, but it doesn't look like that once, it, once it's printed. Well, that's your fault because <laughs> you haven't shown the right, the correct preview to your customers. So make sure to use RGB as much as you can, all right? I hope I've been clear. You've been very Every clear. time. Do you agree with that? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, I would not. Uh, I think it's difficult uh, with like the whole technical aspect of, you know, mm -hmm. getting the right colors. So, you know, it's always better to like, ask somebody who mm -hmm. actually knows what they're doing. And also, yeah, the same YK spectrum is so limited. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would work in RGB and then decide maybe I'll use a. Uh, spot color, uh, Pantone, to get yeah. that exact, exact yeah, 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 color. Yeah, yeah, but spot colors is a completely yeah. different, uh, different thing. Um, yes, right, Ronan, and yes, Robzilla. Facts. It's a fact. <laughs> it's called the RGB workflow. Google it. You know, it's it's real, um, <laughs> and it's the modern workflow. You know, I, I come from a, from a world where I was taught all your images need to be in CMYK before you import them into your page layout application and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but that's not that's not true anymore. No, no. All right. All right. <clears throat> You're back on screen, by the way. OK. <laughs> uh, yes, so I've gone with this red here. And this is more towards the pinkish spectrum. This is more orange. So these are Pantone colors that you like spot colors now. Yes, yes. Okay. So, it, so oh, this wait. is an entirely different thing. Yes. Pan, like spot colors are colors that have their own ink. So mm. uh, it doesn't matter whether it's RGB or CMYK no. or whatever. No, I chose the wrong uh, book here. Let's see. Uh, solid. I guess there's uh, a label on a, uh, on a bottle will probably be coated paper. Um, since since I'm go I'm gonna go with just two colors, mm -hmm. I think it would be then the best probably to choose two Pantones to go with, and um, uh, I'm just gonna choose something here to work with, and then we'll see what happens. Whoops! I'll, I'll let those be there. DBDA Austria, we haven't it yet. We're gonna we're gonna be choosing a uh, a design that was produced during the stream during our Adobe Live from Paris here this week. Okie dokie. <laughs> but this is yellow. I'm gonna do it inverted. Well, yeah. Uh, Kent William Alban says, very clear that you are not a print designer. Me? <laughs> I hope you're not saying me because I've been a print designer for over 20 years, so... <laughs> Something yellow. Oh, I don't like this color combination. This is more orange-ish. I gotta admit, I think it, I, it's really hard to work with colors, choosing colors. Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go monochrome. I'm gonna go monochrome. 
Can you can you set tents in? Uh... Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So make a new uh... new. Uh, yeah, you make a new swatch, and uh, there you can uh, take the spot color. Okay. And uh, well, maybe, but it, it's really weird. Um, it must be possible. Hmm. Oh wait, here. Oh right? yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Right. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Sixty percent. And I'm gonna put the logo in there. Which one is this? A little too much. up the line is <laughs> so why pinks <laughs> pink is a uh, awesome color i love pink um uh joseph is asking if i design stamps too that's actually those stamps are from uh, a uh, course i had in uh, when i was in university um, let's see, one and a half years ago. So my school uh, had a uh, collaboration with the National Postal Service mm -hmm. in Sweden. Well, actually, they, it's Sweden and Denmark. And for 10 years, they would have this course coming back where people from the design department, uh, the stamp design department, would come and uh, you know uh, give us a theme mm -hmm. to make stamps for and then give us feedback. And a lot of the students from my school would actually get to do make the Swedish stamps uh, but they actually shut that the, the design section they shut it down last year I think so that course won't be coming back unfortunately okay what am I doing here could uh, have the I think it would be more logical to have this in the logo layer of course and this down. okay so perhaps I should I'm gonna uh, remove my grid and make it a little bit more detailed so that means 2.5 millimeters no oh now we're having a problem here with the commas maybe it has this is an American plugin so maybe yep 2.5 there we go and it's red but of course if I if I yeah because I said it red yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay I can't have red because then I work I'm putting stuff I work but now I seem it's when I see other designers working I know it's okay to take time to finish yeah right yes. and that I think that's a cool thing about these Adobe live streams is that you actually see how how uh, how creatives work and everybody has different ways of doing things and everybody has their different habits and uh and struggle yes 
Do you feel the struggle? I feel the struggle. Do you feel the struggle to finish that beer label? <laughs> yes. In I the want next to. 45 minutes? <laughs> I want to, but I don't think I'll be filling all these artboards. But, uh, but uh, you know, it. I think that uh, sometimes if it takes takes time, it's because it's a challenge. And when it's a challenge, you learn things, right? If it goes quick, maybe you won't learn that much because you're just mm -hmm. doing something you've already done. So. Let me see this up. Enjoy the process. That's right, Robzilla. Yes. Well, we can look at some work that's yes. been posted to, to Twitter. I've just refreshed the page. Let me go over to my screen. Is it? No. Three. Okay. All right. So this is where it all starts. Yep. This is where we started the stream. And you see Adobe CC Design and Adobe InDesign and Adobe Illustrator mm -hmm. took screenshots. All right. So this is some branding. Is that a oh. 3D render or is it it's, a photograph? Uh, it looks looks like a mix of techniques. Photoshop compositing. Okay. Oh. Hmm? Cool. So the branding, I guess, is this. Let mm -hmm. me just make it bigger. No scrubs. Yeah, very nice. You know, I like I like the the feeling that this yeah. image gives to me. It like it's like something is. It's like a tornado. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a tornado of freshness, <laughs> of no scrubs. Oh, here we go into the, I illustrate for a local brewery, would love to share my process. Philip oh, Dahl, okay. Fun. This looks great, like, like this yeah. is paint. Is this like printed on the bottles or the tired hand or is it engraved in the glass? No, it, it's shiny, so I guess yeah, it's- Yeah, it's printed on it. Yeah, yeah. it's still print, like, yeah, somehow printed. I like this. Is this like a the tired hand? Oh, it's like it's it's, it's like a like is a it, dead thing, like a is skull. It, the, it looks like a skull, like the. It's death, maybe. It's death. Mm, cool, nice. nice way of printing on the bottle. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Oh. Tina Tuli has been oh. working on her on her numbers here. We're gonna be oh. seeing how Tina progresses with her her project in about forty minutes here on AdobeLive.com. Exciting. Yeah. Oh, here we have some India Pale Ale. Oh. Stark. Stark. Cheek. Uh, yeah. Stark, Stark cheek. cheek. Yeah. 
IPA. Okay. 6.2, you know, mm -hmm. they're not kidding, like 6.2, yeah, that's yeah. like strong stuff. Um, I really like these these fonts that, mm. um, you know, that build into each other. Yeah. Um, I think there's some really interesting open type fonts as well that like that sense what the other letter is mm. and like, like sort of build these things. I don't yeah. know if this was hand lettered or, um, but it, this looks really cool. Yeah. Star cheek. And I like how the words are flowing mm -hmm. into each other. Yeah. It's really a, like a 70s hmm. funk kind of feel yeah, to Like kung fu fighting. <laughs> Here we have some book cover design. Oh, science fiction. Mm hmm. I like the. I like this is the Star Wars. Yeah. It, is it? We don't want to offend anybody because nope. now. Do you recognize the spaceship? Are you sure it's from Star Wars? No, I'm not, sure I'm not saying it. anything. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and this, um, hi, Rufus and Eric, watching you guys yesterday inspired me to work on a poster. I love learning new skills awesome. in it. Spherical influences. Mm. Photography by, oh, yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, because yesterday we did that poster, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. So, very nice. I like nice. The, the balance of it. Um, I, you know, I, this bothered me, like, at first sight, this rectangle mm. that's like, boom stuck in there but you know it actually works yeah good work in it logo type visual identity for zoo and pilsen pilsen is that the beer pilsen no Pils pilsen pilsen yeah, pilsen no yeah. yeah. visual identity ng with the lion national gallery in prague Student project, cool. Mm, cool. National Gallery. Yeah. Some illustration. I shared this yesterday, but was late by a second. So here's a repost. Okay, so. So yeah. So that's probably in. Did you do that in Illustrator using you know the all the gradient tools and things? Could be. Maybe. Yeah. But it looks more like Photoshop, doesn't it? Does yeah. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Hard to tell. Yep, I like how you worked with the light, um, the the curtain in the mm. back, <laughs> the teapot club from Yaga. Ah, uh, using the Adobe Illustrator brushes. Oh yeah, those and, are fun. Yeah. Oh, this is definitely inspired by Martina Flor. Yes, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, inspired. it's directly inspired by, yes, because Martina wrote love. Yeah, but it's a good job. Yes. Yep. Like Martina did a, a, a poster yes. with love. Yeah, I saw yeah. it. Do you saw, see it? Yeah. yeah. So. I have one in Dyson. Yeah. <laughs> Usually when you do like uh, lettering in design, mm -hmm. you don't write what you draw. You don't write what you draw. Like if you do a heart, mm. you don't write hearts. Ah, okay. So. Michael is saying, yeah, a good tip here. Don't write what you draw. All right. So it's like to create some suspense, I guess. Right. Like another dimension. Another dimension. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Drawing, uh, like doing some lettering, writing fish. Fish and, and do, making a fish. fish. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. It's like, like yeah. Right swim and shape of the <laughs> Ah, you see, Zoe, it's, it, he used the Illustrator Mesh tool to do the gradients okay. on, on mm -hmm. the... Adobe Live using Illustrator to visualize President's Day lumpy pixels. Interesting mm -hmm. explorations here in shapes and pieces. Yeah, putting together I think there's, uh, it's, it looks unfinished, but like there's pieces flying around here. So maybe you're still working on it, Rob? To visualize, okay. I like this, like presidents made of stuff. <laughs> this uh, the the two engravings here because this is a uh, uh, that. Oh, it's a uh, Abraham Lincoln's face and, uh, mixed with who? George Washington, I guess. Oh yeah, okay. No. Yeah, it could be the like, two presidents together, yeah. hmm? like morphing. Yeah. Okay, here we have some sticker. Oh, look, I like that with the. Uh, Ribbon? The, and the Japanese version, oh. and uh, 
Oh, I could go for some churros right now. Yeah, churros and crepes. Mmm. Mm. Hungry. Logo for a new fr franchise in China. It's not Japanese, it's Chinese. Sorry. <laughs> mm. What do you think? Do you have some feedback oh, on here? Yeah, let's we'll see. I really like them in the, the monochrome. Maybe because I'm doing monochrome myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> to cut, just yeah, like, like I said before, yeah. if it doesn't work in black and white, it doesn't work in color. Oh. So it, it's always best to start in black and white. Yeah, it's easier. To see if it works, if the, if the balances work, and then color it in. Yeah. Also slap serif on that mm -hmm. one. Okay, nice seahorse. Mm. Seaside. Maybe our album cover? Mm hmm. Some magazine covers. Yes, Leah, that's probably better for Amanda or um, Victoria, who's coming back later to look at. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, yeah. you know, layouts is, is always very difficult, especially if you don't have a lot of elements, um, which often happens, right? The customer, mm. oh, you have this one picture and this little bit of text, do beautiful layout, you know? Yeah. So it's really hard. It can feel very empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'm, I'm gonna, tomorrow I'm gonna do a nice a layout. Okay, layout cool. Too, so, we'll see. Okay, nice perspective view. Yeah, maybe the perspective grid. In, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, it looks like may, maybe it's not the perspective no. grid um, because it's not really, it's not really, in, it doesn't have the, um, the vanishing points. No, that's right. Donuts with a mesh tool, I guess. Nice. Ah, like this monochrome illustration, mm. little devil looking at Oh, it's like monsters, I guess. I don't know, little bunnies. There are little creatures jumping mm -hmm. up and down. Yeah. Oh, it's Depressed Bug. We already <laughs> had stuff from Depressed Bug. The infamous Cultopus. This has to be a record cover hmm. or something. Yeah. Oh, this looks very from Cat. This looks interesting. Mm. I like these very geometrical illustrations. Yeah. With something happening inside of the. So. For my game studio, I used to work with. Okay, mm. inside the logo is an office itself. Ah, mm. nice. Yeah, it actually, has a lot of depth mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, yeah this yeah. part here. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh yes, that's the logo. You see. Oh, okay. And then they open yeah. the logo, and there's people working in the logo. Yeah. Oh, and this is from with the with the uh, gradient, not the not blend the, the, the blend tool. Yeah, yeah. crazy shapes can, can be done like mm. that. Nice work, Kelsey. This is photography, I guess. Yeah. Wait, what is it? lighters? A, this is the story of the first night of February twenty fourteen Venezuela protest. Mm. I can't open. Uh, I don't want to open Behance galleries and stuff like that because. It would be unfair for others, right? So if mm. you go like into too much depth. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, but I would surely look at it personally. Uh, depressed bug, another illustration. Mm. <laughs> and. Ah, some blend tool oh, again. Very nice yeah. use of blend tool. Very intriguing. Local jazz trio CD jacket. Songs. Mm. It's always fun making artwork for yeah. music. It's... Cool. Thanks for sharing, guys. Nice work. Keep it coming. And Anna, I didn't see your stuff, so what happened? Uh, we need to figure that out. Let me go back to your screen. Yes. Okay, we've got a half an hour here. Uh, Jeez. Yes. Yeah. Took... <laughs> oh, no. Um... <clears throat> Customer is going. Oh, no. uh oh. Well, um, yeah. So I think I was a little over optimistic here, opening ten artboards. <laughs> <laughs> so just to chill out a bit, I think I'm just gonna delete all of this uh, and focus on 
almost completing one. Okay, two point eight. I'm 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 starting to think. Why did I take choose two point eight? But I think it's like the limit for. There's like a uh, different in Sweden. There's light beer, mm -hmm. low that's, alcohol. That's super light beer. Yeah, and then I think so. I think if it's oh two point eight or over, then it's called middle, medium beer. Okay. And then there's strong beer. And teenagers can't buy it anymore. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think yeah, you can buy. Yeah. There's different rules. Different. How big the percentage has to be, but I'm gonna make it kind of small. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to put this on a uh, on a, this path here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna copy that shape. Paste it. Put it into the typography layer and Let's see. Type on path. Yes, guys, I refreshed the page just before starting to view it. So anything that is posted to Twitter after I start reviewing uh, will show up in the next one. Just go with this typeface too. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Uh, what was it called? The Wool Hamilton. Oh, Van Lanen, yeah, like Van Halen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have the Swedish characters. Mm. Oh, no. Well, then it's obvious it won't work. We need a quieter door for the Paris studio. Yeah, you wouldn't imagine the security that's in this door. We need a little badges to get in, and oh. then once it closes, it goes and like, oh. like yeah, like yeah. everything. Lockdown. Like lockdown. Oh, oh Alexandre. time got left oh no yeah we have about we have 20 minutes left okay well oh how do you do that which uh, uh, oh you did you just make the size smaller of the object yeah yeah you know but what you could do also to like to maintain the mm -hmm. um, uh, the the size of the object like yeah. at the, so it remains the same because when you reduce it it actually changes the shape right the proportions the yeah. proportions and uh, it, and the text isn't really so what you can do is change the baseline Mm. A baseline shift, and um, I think it's in the paragraph. Um, let me see. Uh, no, I can't. I, okay, let's not lose time with that. But anyway, like shifting, mm -hmm. like shifting the text instead of shifting the shape. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. I'm, I'm gonna go back to the settings there for uh, type on path. 
Offset path. Yeah, that's what I meant. Offset path. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Let's see, because here I can set it to. I said I changed it. Shape, Wasn't path. it in that same window? No. No, it wasn't there. No. no. But maybe this this will work. I don't know. Yeah, offset here. No. Two point five. Nothing's happened. Nothing uh, no, no. happened. Oh. Nah. We'll have to go with the yeah. Just quick, go yes, quick and easy solution. Crunch it out. Yep. Oh, baseline shift is in the character panel. Thank you. <laughs> Is it? I see the buffering icon a lot, Jan Eric. Uh, I don't. So it must be you. And my YouTube says, Tout va bien. Tout va bien. Tout va bien. Tout va bien. Everything's under control. Yeah, that's right, Anita. Type on a path is easier to manipulate in InDesign. That's right. Mm. There's a whole bunch of crazy things you can do. But we'll talk for that now. No. no. But today I thought I would just focus on using Illustrator, because tomorrow I'll only be using InDesign. Hmm. This actually looks... Okay, so you guys are, have buffering issues. Hmm. And where are you watching the stream? On adobelife.com or on YouTube? Yes, Toms, there will be a giveaway for a one-year Creative Cloud subscription in just a moment. There is more badge on this. Yes. If you had to be badge at the... Mendor, yeah. Door. It doesn't work. So how did you get in? Someone was there. So we need to let So now people are saying they have some um, some buffering issues, but I see the stream is good here. I don't know. Everybody's watching it on Adobe Live. Okay, thank you guys. What am I doing? This is weird. Uh, a letter has jumped out. <laughs> wow. I think it's the path that is. It's a random letter. Is that the letter? <laughs> no, it's. Let's see. This is so random. Oh, look, wow. It's like. It's a feature. Yeah, it's <laughs> a feature. <laughs> I, w I think I would rather just have like without let's see double like this but then I would have to have uh, 
<laughs> Ronan, yeah. Welcome to the impossible things that can happen in Illustrator. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Wow. Thank you, Count Zero. I'll have Michael fix that right away. Major typo in the description. Needs to be fixed after the stream. <laughs> so people read the description. Ah, yes. Now we, you know, we, we just write the description. We don't read it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll fix it after. But thanks, Count Zero. You don't count zero anymore, you count one. Because, you know, mm. it's promotion, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Kayotube, why do you, don't, why don't I do um, design tutorials? Well, I could, but it's so much more interesting to see uh, you know, uh, people who are, who are actually working in the field right now and, um, you know, share their knowledge and share, share their passion for design. Um, but yeah, I, I miss making videos and stuff. I could show some cool stuff too, but another time. <laughs> yeah, count zero one, Adobe zero. No. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. It no, you think you have fifteen minutes, but in reality you have ten minutes. Oh no! Yes. Oh. Da -da -da. No. Um. Let's see. What can we ask? Do you have a Do you have a question? Do you have a mean question? In your yeah, like you're good at the. Uh, at the yes oh yes Mike Michael is grinning he's coming up with something the title? yeah yeah oh he's, you know what I was gonna ask the exact same question okay all right guys it's one word what is the typo in the description help us help us find the typo Write the typo here in the um, uh, in the chat, and uh, that's your chance to win a one-year Creative Cloud subscription here on AdobeLive.com. Um, so, yep, find the typo and paste it in here in the chat, mm -hmm. just to make sure that you know me and Michael understand. Hey, PT Paul Tran is in the house. All right, so let's see that typo. And uh, remember that if you are watching on Adobe Live uh, dot com, <laughs> ah, yep, ah, 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 <laughs> it's coming. I see the typo. No, no, no. You need to write it with the typo. Yeah. You don't. You don't. No, no. Don't correct it for us. <laughs> we'll do the correction. And um, yeah. So one thing I wanted to mention is that if you are a Creative Cloud. Um, uh, YouTube, uh, if you subscribe to the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, you have five times more chances to win in these giveaways because we have an automated system called Nightbot that will pick a lucky winner inside of, uh, you know, people are trying to correct it. No, 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 give us the wrong word. And, um, and pick a lucky winner. So by subscribing to the uh, to the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, you have you actually quintuple your chances to win in these giveaways. And this is the giveaway for the one year Creative Cloud subscription during Eric's stream on day two of our Adobe live stream from Paris. I like that crack in it. Yeah, but it's supposed to be a sundry. <laughs> ah, but I have to cover up uh, behind the, the Falcon here. So now we're sure that everybody actually went to the description and read it, right? <laughs> <laughs> The prize, Jesse, is a one-year Creative Cloud subscription. If you are already a Creative Cloud member, it add another year. 
It's out of control. Yeah, right. All these typos. I mean, can you guys not write the word work? Come on. <laughs> All right, are we getting the winner? Is Nightbot gonna provide us with a winner? Check. Check. Chuck P, you've won the giveaways. You're the lucky winner of a one year um, Creative Cloud subscription. So Chuck P, what you need to do is here in the chat, please share your Twitter handle or um, uh, yeah, your Twitter handle. That's that's what works best for us to send you a direct message uh, with all the information you need to claim your prize. Chuck P, you can't believe it. Yo, <laughs> when did Chuck P subscribe to the channel? During the lettering stream. Good for you, Chuck. You see, it pays to come back to Adobe Live. <laughs> Okay, Chuck just shared his uh, um, Twitter handle. Boingo Bear. All right, we'll be in touch. How are we doing here? You have six minutes. Okay. I'm just gonna do some do some random stuff. See what happens. Oh, and William just got your email prize today. Cool, awesome. William Workman, remember? Just got my email prize today. Well, Chuck, it's this is ironic because thanks so much, Adoni Live. You're you're actually one <laughs> for a typo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a desktop wallpaper that people like? Hmm? Did you your uh, desktop? Okay, maybe. No. Hide. Oh, this one. This one. Is this is something you created? Yes, this is something I made. Oh, nice. Yeah. Can you share it? <laughs> people are asking. Uh, yeah. Oh, and Cat Cat got her email prize today as well. All right. Something is happening. Emails are going out today. <laughs> All right, I'm glad to know. Glad to know that. You're doing that manually? This? Yes. No, I'm, I used the blend tool. Ah, okay. But it's not working. It's not... Because I, I want to expand this now and mm -hmm. make these longer but maybe i'll just have to do it manually so let's see what eric can do in his last four minutes of today's stream we will uh, be back with eric tomorrow of course so if you go over to adobelive.com there is actually a little tab down there that says schedule and from there we can see that our next guest tina tuli uh will be on in uh, about 10 minutes and uh she started a crazy lettering project yesterday cutting out like 30 pieces of paper that she then unfolded and I'm really curious to see what she's going to be doing with that. I think there's some illustrator involved. But anyway, uh, so we're going to have Tina um, uh, working on her poster and then we're going to have Victoria Ivaldi again for the night shift with me uh, from 10 p.m. to midnight uh, Paris time um, and that's why we call it the night shift this during the night mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course tomorrow again we're gonna be and uh, Victoria for one last day of graphic design here on adobelife.com oh oh no uh you know what you're probably gonna fix that overnight yes right I yeah I think uh... we give you some homework Eric okay and great. you're gonna be showing us the result tomorrow yep well have to be that's what I'll have, I'll have to do. Yeah, yeah, Niklas, I'm curious, very, I'm very curious to what Tina's up to with her 
paper cutting. Anyway, so what did we do today? We made a well the beginning of a beer label mm -hmm. for Falcon Beer. Okay. And uh, you know, there's still some way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah many decisions and it's also hard with labels since you want so much information on such a small mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. right um, and yeah let's think about it here all right so yeah. um oh yeah so tomorrow do you have a do you, you want to anticipate a little bit what you're going to be doing tomorrow sure uh well yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna work a little bit on this mm -hmm. and show show mm -hmm. That at first, but I'm gonna do a uh, magazine layout. But I'm gonna focus on um, basing it on a uh, typographic baseline. Mm -hmm. um, how to how I will construct the grid according to that, mm -hmm. and it will involve a lot of decimals. Okay, cool, awesome. But, yeah, <laughs> I was just thinking, Eric. But let me just. We have a tool here called the Star Tool. Mm -hmm. What about we use the Star Tool to do that? Yeah. More, 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 more. And then we need to come, make it come in. Yeah. Wait. Oh, there's there's a way to do it. Wait. Oh, it, boom. Mm. Okay. But let me just delete yeah. that for a second, because I think if we double click on the star tool. No. Wait. There's a way. Wait. We need to we need to finish. Okay. But anyway, that's. Yeah. Just, okay. Yay! Yay. Uh, <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> See you in five minutes uh, with Tina Tuli and uh, Eric. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Stay tuned. <laughs>